All right, thanks, Eddie. All right, so my name is Daniel Cruz. How's everybody doing? Oh, what? The mic? Oh, there we go. That's awesome. How's it going, everybody? My name is Daniel Cruz. Um, I'm from the Lubbock District. I'm going to be showing you projects that are being underdeveloped, under development using the three design tools. Uh, we asked districts to um, send snapshots of their projects under, de under, uh, under development in the past few years. And as you can see, they've, like everybody in the district has been really busy. Uh, Yoakum has four projects on, uh, that they've been working on. Uh, one is a new uh, grade separation project of three uh, bridge replacements. Uh, Corpus Christi and Lufkin each have two projects and that they sent, uh, sent to us. Uh, Houston, Paris, Belmont, Lubbock um, each sent one project uh, for snapshots. So the first project I'm going to talk about is the uh, Lubbock uh, US-84 Slayton Railroad Bridge. Um, it's basically what's going to be is converting an at-grade crossing, a railroad crossing, into a, an overpass crossing. And what we're doing is we're adding turnarounds, we're adding ramps, and converting the existi existing main lanes and restriping them to convert them into uh, our frontage roads. And so in this image, what you're seeing here is the raw design um, corridor uh, overlaid over the point cloud. Um, right now, what's set at is there's like different spectrums for elevation. So as you can see, the darker colors are the lower ele elevations. And the lighter colors, I think green, is uh, the, some of the higher elevations. And here, uh, one of the issues that we are able to solve uh, with, with this program is we're able to identify utility conflicts. So I don't know if you can see, let's see, let's see right there. Uh, you can kind of make out a line uh, that represents the power line that was going to be in conflict with our bridge. So right now it's, it, what you're seeing is just like a bunch of small little points uh, that represent the, the power lines. So in order to clear that up and kind of have a distinct line of what, you know, what, what is a power line um, in our raw survey data, um, we use the, the CARTS tools to uh, basically like 3D snap to the, to the points. And so we created these lines um, that are essentially the, the power line. And yeah, <laughs> no, we're not gonna leave the power line there. Okay, um, so the next uh, issue that we came across was the footprint of our embankment. Um, so we were uh, an initially gonna um, design this project as a divided highway uh, with a, a me medium ditch going down the middle, but the, the footprint of the embankment was gonna be too big and the uh, slopes were gonna be spilling over the right of way. Um, so what, what we decided, uh, oh, and we didn't want to use any, any retaining walls in this project because um, it was going to add more cost. So what we did is we decided to bring the two roadbeds together and make it an undivided highway with a barrier going down the middle. And as you can see, the slopes, I'm just going to have these. Uh, the slopes fit a lot, a lot better. Um, they are footprint smaller and actually we saved money with embankment um, because obviously the the footprint's gonna be smaller. So there's the Lubbock project uh, once it's all rendered. So then we go on to the uh, Yoakum District and this is their pilot project, uh, US 87 Bridge. Um, it's an overpass project at FM 447 just outside of the city of Victoria. Um, it includes a transition from a four lane divided highway to a five lane highway and let's see. And here's the overpass, and this is the, uh, the aerial view of the, of the overpass. I uh, just wanted to point out some of the uh, details that they, they worked really hard at putting in. Um, these uh, metal beam guard fence, like you see here, just, you can create those using the 3D line styles, as well as uh, the, this barrier. Um, the F-shaped barrier, you, you can do that with using the templates, as like what Eddie was showing earlier. And um, basically, you just draw it in into your uh, template, and it just 
the program just pushes it out and it does it in the background. And here are just some rendered images so like underneath the bridge, uh, the transitions, um, and how it goes from a median ditch and to, uh, to a barrier. Uh, their first, or not first, but one of their bridge replacement projects was um, here the existing is, is a swing bridge at the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway. Uh, they're going to replace that bridge with a, what's been dubbed the corkscrew bridge. Um, the designers were initially wanted, or they needed to raise the PGL, the bridge, but there wasn't enough room for um, traditional uh, cater banks. So they came up with this design. And they actually designed this using the Geopack legacy tools, uh, the older uh, 2D Geopack. And then it was converted into 3D using the new 3D tools. So here you can see, you can, you can see the geometry a lot better and you can visualize where the pro profiles are gonna be um, crossing each other and, and how everything's all connected. And for their next bridge replacement project is a bridge that, that's gonna replace the, and a structurally efficient bridge at Park Road 38 near uh, Sealy, Texas. Um, again, you can see, there's a close up view of some of the 3D line styles that they used uh, for the metal beam guard fence, uh, which you see here. Um, there's another small uh, bridge replacement. Here they took it a step further with the uh, 3D line styles and just basically just added the, some 3D cells to represent the SGTs at the end of the, at the, end of the guard fences. So we go on to the Corpus Christi district, and this, this is the US 181 uh, grade separation. Uh, let's see, let me find my spot. It's, uh, it's located on US 181 at the K. Bailey Hutchison Road. Um, it also involves uh, ramp reversals, and it's designed to be compatible with the future expansion of US 181 and the state uh, highway 35. And here's a close-up view of the, of the overpass. And just some eye candy. Okay, then we go to the Houston district, and this is their pilot project. It's a, the reconstruction of the I-45. Um, and it's gonna be uh, you know, rebuilding the 10-lane freeway with a two to three lane, um, and with the two, two to three lane frontage roads. And as you can see here, they also uh, threw in some braided ramps, and you can, it's uh, the 3D like, program really helped with uh, visualizing the braided ramps and how they all get connected and uh, tie it back into the roads and, and the frontage roads. So this is one of the uh, more interesting projects. Uh, this is coming from the Lufkin district. Uh, it's the Lake Livingston Park uh, project. It's, it's going to be a reconstruction of the access road with uh, two park loops, um, 74 and 74 uh, RV campsites. They had a few issues that they came across using the design, um, but they were able to resolve those using the open roads tools. So in this instance, they after they laying the, the corridor, the 3D corridor on top of the uh, existing um, culvert, they found that the culvert was too short uh, and wasn't reaching the side slopes. So what they had to do is like, they had to throw in um, an extension of the pipe uh, into their design. And here you can see which is that. Um, let's see. Oh. And this is the uh, Piney Shore Loop, one of the loops that they, they uh, designed. They also, um, I don't have any pictures of it, but they also uh, designed the, or designed, you know, according to the ADA constraints, uh, using the open road, open road tools, which is pretty helpful because then you can see how um, the ramps and the sidewalks were able to, you know, like, be connected and and were incorporated with the, with the existing elements. And this is, uh, oh, they. 
there, you're actually, you're, you can actually um, stripe the, like literally just stripe the, uh, the elements, and this is a pretty good example of that. So the next one is the um, safety rest area at Hopkins County. It's coming from the Paris District. Uh, they, what this incorporated was a rerouting of the frontage road, and they used uh, separate alignments for the truck parking road and the car parking road. Um, initially, they designed this using the 2D tools, but they were able to uh, convert it into 3D using the, using the open roads. And this is what uh, this is what they came up with. Also, uh, it's kind of outside of our scope, but um, I was actually informed that I believe this project was uh, going to also incorporate roller compacted uh, concrete, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, two minutes. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I have a few videos to show, and I'm going to show them real quick. Um, let's see, I believe this is the Beaumont job, is that right? Okay. Yeah, it's the Beaumont job. Um, as you can see, it includes the uh, bridge. Um, I believe they use a, a scalable terrain model to kind of illustrate um, some of this stuff right here. And I mean, I, they did a pretty good job of Which this one? Oh, this is the other Lufkin job. And they also, I believe they also use a scalable terrain model to kind of um, illustrate the existing stuff. And this is uh, the Lubbock job. Um, I'm a little more familiar with this one because uh, my design team um, and my engineer worked on this one. Um, as you can see here, is like we uh, converted the existing main lanes into the frontage roads, and then we have uh, two turnarounds. What we want to do here is we want to get rid of uh, the at-grade crossing. Um, we didn't want anybody crossing into that road because they're actually going to be ex the railroad is going, going to be expanding. Um, the tracks. So I think believe they're adding two more tracks, and it'll ultimately be four tracks. And I believe, yeah. It, then you can see uh, this is the raw wireframe uh, mode flyby. And what you see in the yellow is actually uh, the profile of the railroad. So that really helped us kind of uh, narrow down target where we wanted. Uh, our profile of the bridge. All right. Um, I guess my time's up. Thank you. <laughs>